It's not even about the quarterbacks. It's all about a tale of two organizations. And you saw it live in action with Pittsburgh and the Jets last night. We're going to talk about it more here on Locked On NFL. The barbershop is open and Tony Wiggins has a chair for you. He's ready with some real NFL talk. The local experts of Locked On bring their expertise. And Wiggy is ready with his clippers and shears. Sit down and enjoy. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is your team every day here on Locked On NFL. We thank you for making us your first listen and welcome to the new Locked On NFL, bringing you a double dose of the NFL's biggest stories with the help of our local experts that know your favorite teams like no one else. I am the host, the barber, Tony Wiggins, joined today by Locked On NFL expert, my homie, Ross Jackson. We're going to make sure we get some good stuff to you today. The NFC East, most and least, is where we'll finish off. Right in the middle, a war has started in the North, and that is a very good division and maybe the best division in football. But first, we're going to start out with the quarterback situation in both New York with the Jets and with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So much talk coming into that game, and you got a lot of questions answered. Mm -hmm last night we appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day and being an every day here on locked on nfl which is a part of the locked on podcast network your team every day make sure you tune in again to locked on nfl tomorrow morning because the madman tyler Rowland will hit you with a double shot of espresso very early for more nfl coverage today's show is brought to you and sponsored by hillsdale college that's right man you want to learn something for free, you better get your butt on over there to Hillsdale. That's right, man, because they have some courses right now at hillsdale.edu slash locked on where you can enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. Speaking of getting started, we're going to start with my brother from another mother right now, Ross Jackson. My What's God. going on? What's up, homie? Glad to be here with you, man. I'm glad to be here with you, too. Now, uh, we both uh, cover two bad football teams, so we ain't going to talk about them right now. <laughs> they got, they got talking four. about somebody else's bad football team for a second. Yeah, we're going to be all up in everybody else's business real quick. I'm, <laughs> let's start with, well, first of all, we can start with a bad football team in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, one definite way to guarantee that you're bad is to make your quarterback, the head coach, and the GM. Of uh -huh. the There's a lot of mess going on right there in New York, isn't it? That's a whole lot going on over there. And you look, you saw it start all with the uh, the the firing of Robert Sala, which is a move that wasn't a bad move, but probably should have been made in the offseason as opposed to midway through the season. Now you're seeing Aaron Rodgers play general manager. He played owner with the firing of uh, Robert Sala. He's playing general manager now with the trade of uh, Devontae Adams. They go at one another for at the very first play of the game. What happened? Throw outside the frame. Devontae Adams can't catch it. Uh-oh, looks like trouble. Uh, and uh, it, it's just, it, it's not happening. It's not happening the way that they wanted to see with old A-Rod over there. It isn't. And guess what? We always have the local experts who have every reason to be biased, but when you hear them talk the way you're about to hear my <laughs> man John Butchko talk, you know it's a whole bunch of BS going on. Check this out. The Jets are a bad football team. It's as simple as that. I'm John, the host of Locked On Jets, and the New York Jets fell to 2-5 and five on Sunday night in an embarrassing 37-15 loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a game that was frustrating for so many reasons. Maybe the biggest reason is that the Jets dominated the first two quarters. They led by nine points with a minute 15 seconds left in the first half. Then Aaron Rodgers threw a brutal interception. The Steelers scored a touchdown before the half and completely took control of the game in the second half. Bad football teams find ways to get blown out even when they dominate the first two quarters. Devontae Adams, a complete non-factor, only three catches for 30 yards and no catches in the second half. There's nothing else you can say. This team stinks right now. For more on the Jets, tune into Locked On Jets tomorrow. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The man oh said boy. they stink, Ross, and oh I, I, I don't agree with him. Another po a point that you made that I want to hit on. Jeff Ubrick, I believe that's his name, the defense coordinator and the interim head coach, he is considered a really good coach, and they had a yep. really good defense. But this is what I tell people about being careful when you hire a play caller. This is the same thing as getting mm -hmm. some hot shot offensive play caller. If he's your defensive coordinator and he's now the play caller, look how the defense suffers because of all the stuff that he has to do as a head coach. You got to be really, really careful that you don't let a player, and I am not one of those dudes that's always talking about the inmates running the asylum, but there's a reason why the quarterback <laughs> should just be the damn quarterback and right. he's sitting here trying to make all these other decisions. 
I feel very similarly about head coach and coordinators. Just let the head coach and the coordinators be the damn head coach and coordinators, right? Like let your coordinators call the plays. Let your head coach be the head coach. There's a reason that it was like that for as long as it's been like that. And it's a reason why oftentimes when you see the head coach play caller that that ends up eventually going south. Look at Kyle Shanahan right now. Can't get past Steve Spagnola. Like cannot beat that, that <laughs> defense. Cannot figure that out at all. You look at what's going on here now where you had this really solid defense in New York for the Jets that was helping them win games early. It wasn't Aaron Rodgers winning games early. It was a defense winning those games over in New York. And then now you move over and then you see how the defense struggles. Just let the people that have the jobs they have do the jobs that they have. Barbers are really good at giving advice, especially when it's unsolicited. Except we know when there's <laughs> real trouble and people ask for advice, that's when you just go, "No, nah, man, you got to go see a counselor or pray yeah, about yeah, it." Yeah, yeah. We we know when the real heavy stuff gets involved. I, I'm going to show you the difference between a bad organization and a good organization, one that makes proactive decisions based on knowing who they are. Chris Carter for Locked On Steelers will let you know how they felt after last night's game. Chris Carter here from the Locked On Steelers podcast here at Akersher Stadium behind me after the Steelers have taken down the Jets 37-15 advancing to 5-2. and two. The Steelers came out a little slow on offense with Russell Wilson making his first start of the season, but they caught on scoring 37 points, most scored in quite some time for the Steelers, I think since 2021. But Russell Wilson, sharp late in this game and after that first first half he really locked in 16 of 29 for 264 only sacked one time two touchdowns no interceptions pass rating of 109 also had a rushing touchdown on a qb sneak Najee harris going off for 102 yards and a touchdown george pickens 111 yards and a touchdown the bottom line is this steelers team especially on offense did show the balance attack we talked about being there all this week on locked on steelers the defense pitched a second half shutout it was a great performance all around we'll talk about that more on the locked on Steelers podcast. Tune on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Ross, let me tell you something. You saw two questionable decisions heading into this game this week. One was made by a player. The other one was made by what is going to be a Hall of Fame Super winning, Super Bowl winning quarterback. And he has his finger on the pulse of his team and it paid off for Pittsburgh last night with Russell Wilson. Yeah, absolutely. Look, this was a big sort of hotly contested situation for Mike Tomlin, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers head coach, making the decision to go with Russell Wilson after a four and two start with Justin Fields. But why do you do it? Well, he wanted to make sure that he was making the right decision. They brought in Russell Wilson to be the guy, give him the opportunity to either be the guy or prove to you that he can't be the guy so that you have the information you need to be able to make the decision at quarterback. That's what a good organization does. That's what the Pittsburgh Steelers are. That's what Mike Tomlin did. And that's how this team wins a football game. Look at George Pickens looking like a number one receiver, catching the ball, contesting a, a fryer yeah. move out there with one hand. You know, you galvanize a team when you do stuff like that. And 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 it looks like Justin Fields is in a really good space. And I wouldn't be shocked if they keep him around for the future and just say, hey man, we're gonna slow walk you. And 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 the Pittsburgh Steelers all of a sudden now are a team with a pretty decent quarterback situation at least for the rest of this season all oh, but there's another north not the afc north where the steelers dwell there's one in the nfc that people talked about forever and now everybody's armed and weaponized with quarterbacks and identities and maybe three of the best teams in the conference and a fourth that was on a bye that might have a little bit of something to say about that we'll touch on all of that stuff here in just a second on locked on nfl Today's show is sponsored and brought to you by BetterHelp. Man, if you knew my history, you'd understand that I have had several reasons to get therapy. It used to be real hard on therapy, but then when I realized I was off my square and I needed to get back right, BetterHelp was there for me. Whether it's pain management, sleep deprivation, trying to spend time with your family, or turning 55 trying to figure out how you're going to sustain financially for the rest of your life. Well, you know what? If you don't want to do it on your own and you're thinking about starting therapy, please just give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Overcome your fears and anxiety with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. I'm going to spell it for you. It's better H E L P dot com slash locked on therapy can really help if you're considering giving it a try there's no place better than better help today's show is also sponsored and brought to you by hillsdale college 
Listen to these things that Hillsdale College offers, man. Our sponsor for today, they offer more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including, check this out, tell me it's not relevant, Constitution 101, the meaning and history of the Constitution, Introductory to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Republic, and a brand new documentary style course on Marxism, Socialism, and Communism. Ooh, leave it up to them to hit all the hot spots, man. And I'm telling you, they are doing it. All of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced so that you can start whenever and tune in whenever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. I'm going to spell it for you. It's H-I-L-L-S-D-A-L-E dot E-D-U slash locked on. You are back in the barbershop and we are rolling along with Ross Jackson of Locked On NFL, Locked On Saints too, as you can see right there on the screen. That's right. Um, talking about good football teams today, since it is Monday, Victory Monday for a lot of people, one of those teams that is Victory Monday for the Detroit Lions. They lose Aiden mm -hmm. Hutchinson, they get out to a big lead in Minnesota, then Minnesota comes roaring back. A very, very well-played game, a good game. And even in long, losing, I think Ross Minnesota made a, a, a good showing for themselves in this game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this isn't a game that you lose and then, or that the Vikings lose and then you turn around and go, oh, the Vikings are frauds. I thought they were frauds earlier on in the season. I said that Tyler and I kind of went through it and stuff like that on another episode of Locked in NFL. But uh, the Minnesota Vikings have done nothing but prove themselves over and over again. And I don't think a loss to, first of all, a division, Rob, you know how weird division games can be sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then also to the Detroit Lions, who are one of the other best teams in football right now. I don't think that that's a loss that you turn around and look at these Vikings and say, ah, they were never good in the first place. No, you just it, It's hard to root against people that are physical and winning and playing this way. Check out what my man Luke Braun said in yesterday's defeat. Vikings fall to five and one. Hello, my name is Luke. I do Locked on Vikings, wherever you find your favorite shows. Vikings fall in just uh, just by a hair to the Detroit Lions. Last second field goal, 31-29, the final score. And it comes down to a whole bunch of little moments throughout the whole game. They only have 30 seconds, no timeouts at halftime because of some snafus earlier in the in the half. Maybe that would have been the thing. They don't get a two-point conversion. That would have ended up being, like, that ended up being decisive. Um, but a lot of big plays, big haymakers traded both ways. Felt very much like a playoff game. Not the first time I'm saying that this year, but this time the Vikings are on the short end of it. Probably the big headline, though, is that Flores' defense gets pretty exposed again. And I'm using the word exposed very deliberately because of the connotation it has that other teams can copy what the Lions did and do it back. We've got that to talk about in all kinds of other moments, so stay tuned for Locked on Vikings. Love Luke Bronx for Locked On Vikings. I disagree with him a little bit. I don't think they were exposed. I think what it comes down to is no matter who you are on paper, you still got to prove it. And another team is fighting and pushing too. So I do believe, I don't think every team can do what Detroit does because I think mm -hmm. what Detroit does, they do it probably as well as 29 other teams in the league. Yeah, and they got one of the best offensive lines in football, right? And not a lot of teams can say, you know, there's not a lot of teams out there that can say that they're even in that conversation. It kind of feels like offensive line play this year. There's three teams at the top and then the field because offensive line play is atrocious across the league. And I've got my theories on that that go back to college and lack of development at the positions and all those other things. But we don't have to get into that right now, Tony. I'll keep myself <laughs> under control for a moment. But um, I think one of the biggest things that you have to look at when it comes to Detroit's win is Jameer Gibbs. I mean, the dude's a superstar. Like, there's just no doubt about it. He's an absolute superstar. And when you have a guy that can go out there and give an individual performance like that beyond what the offensive line was able to pay for him, that's going to be really, really tough to stop for any team. And you think power and you don't think speed, but now you got right. a dude that's a reincarnation of a Jamal Charles. That's what every time I look at him, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. he's like Jamal Charles. And he's a very, very good player. They find different ways to win. Jared Goff, again, was very measured, very good. This has to go down. If they keep winning and they get the ultimate prize, Jared Goff's going to go around as one of the top reclamation projects. Oh, of, absolutely. In the history of the National Football League. Now, the rest of the North. The Bears had a bye, but they're four and two, and people say they ain't played nobody. Well, that's cool. They're going to get older as the year goes on, and they, they're they built for the future, even if not this year. There's right. another team. There's a team in Wisconsin, 
And all week, you know me, I love gossip, especially when you're barred, right? So, <laughs> oh, well, you had it this week. <laughs> all week, man. Big Sarge, welcome, welcome to the network, Big Sarge. Big Sarge and my man Peter Bukowski were duking it out, talking about both of these two young quarterbacks. And if you think Peter Bukowski has a little pep in his voice and he's peacocking a little bit, well, he probably is. Check him out right here. The Green Bay Packers defense suffocated, knocked down, and battered C.J. Stroud. At the end, Jordan Love and new kicker, Brandon McManus did the rest in a signature win for this 2024 season. The Packers get a 24 to 22 dub. This is a story about defense. The first completion for a conversion on third down was late in the fourth quarter. Now it was the third down conversion, but it was their first of the game, the Houston Texans. The Packers had absolutely beguiled, just bewildered and battered and bruised C.J. Stroud. He finishes this game 10 of 21 for 86 yards. Hey, man, you can't deny it. Green Bay is playing better defense. They got rid of Joe Barry, and all of a sudden they know how to play defense now. It's, (laughs) It's at every level, front, middle, and back. And now I am really looking forward to them playing uh, not only Minnesota, but I am looking forward to them playing Detroit and even the Bears. I think that division is outstanding. Yeah, no, it's going to end up being one of the better divisions in football, if not the best division in football, considering some of the drop off we've seen over at the AFC West outside of the Kansas City Chiefs. The thing that I that really impressed me about uh, Green Bay was their pressure, their front in particular. You mentioned all three levels of the defense, but it was the front for me uh, that did it. Forty eight point three percent of C.J. Stroud's dropbacks were under pressure he was three of nine for 40 yards under pressure three of nine he completed fewer passes than he was sacked sacked four times under pressure as well uh in those situations just put him through an absolute clinic of hey you're the young guy you had this great rookie season i personally still think of cj stroud as a top 10 top five quarterback in the nfl no doubt about it for me uh but this was one of those games where he kind of came crashing back down to reality and just as excited as i am to see the uh, the nfc north play out i'm excited to see how cj stroud responds the next time he's out on the football field i am too man and uh the other thing that has to happen in my opinion is we have to acknowledge nico collins uh injury right yeah and, and that how impact, uh, having sure. a six foot side six foot five 220 pound uh t-rex out there really masks a lot of things and one of the things that masked me is the, the trouble that they have on the interior of the offensive line with the pressure yeah. that was coming and then laramie yep. tunsil Thought of as a first battle Hall of Famer, he kind of sliding a little bit in that play. He isn't standing up right now. Now, we talked about the division where the, the difference between the top and the bottom ain't that big. Now, we got to right. talk about a division where the division between <laughs> the top and the bottom is humongous, right? I'm talking about <laughs> gargantuan. I'm talking about the NFC East, or some people might call it the NFC Least. We'll get into that in just a second here on Locked On NFL. Now, before I tell you about FanDuel, our sponsor for today, if your team's going to lose, man, at least you can win some money. That's all I got to tell you. At least you can win some money with America's number one sports book. My team's been losing, but I've been winning. So I'm kind of all right, but I'm kind of not. Here's the thing. If you're a new player on FanDuel, if you go to FanDuel and make your first wager, your first wager of $5, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. I didn't say you had to win. I just say you had to show up, make your first $5 wager. America's number one sports book is just that for real. And say you're in a press box or in your game, uh, in a stadium, and the Wi-Fi is going off. Once you get on that page, you don't have to leave to check stats. You don't have to leave to view play-by-play. And there's so much on the same page where you make your bets. Because FanDuel is just that. They are the number one sports book in America. You might as well win some money if your team's going to lose. Go ahead and go over to FanDuel.com and make that first $5 bet. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. It is FanDuel, again, America's number one sports book. All right, moving along here. 
on Locked On NFL with Ross Jackson of Locked On NFL, Locked On Saints. Now, my man Julian Council is usually, I know sometimes people say, y'all all look alike. Julian Council and Ross Jackson don't look anything alike to me, right? But I will tell you this. I will tell you this. Julian Council will be back here Monday morning with his comic <laughs> relief, making y'all making me laugh, making me edit these shows because he's making me laugh so hard, right? But um, bad teams. His his team was horrible yesterday. They lost to Jaden Daniels uh, or Jaden Daniels less Washington Commanders mm -hmm. team forty to seven. Uh, they are terrible, and the Patriots are terrible. And uh, the Giants are terrible, but the Giants are in the East along with the terrible Cowboys. And Washington is, uh, they're a lot better than a lot of, they've won yep. five games, Ross Jackson. The Washington Commanders have won five games. They've been absolutely outstanding in the process. And I'll tell you what, the fact that they were able to get that done, a 40-point hang over the Carolina Panthers. Now, I know the Carolina Panthers aren't much to write home about. I cover a team that hung 40 points on the Carolina Panthers as well, as well as, of course, those terrible Dallas Cowboys you mentioned, and they've been on a five-game uh, losing streak since then. So we know how bad those other teams are. And so when you look at the Carolina Panthers, obviously they're abysmal. But when it comes to where the uh, Washington Commanders are, they are well above expectation. And the fact that they won that game with Marcus Mariota at quarterback for the majority mm. of it after losing Jaden Daniels, which, by the way, the Jaden Daniels injury update is set to happen later on on Monday. He's doing some extra tests and things like that, but nothing so far has shown up as, as a big issue. Uh, boy, Washington is a ton of fun to watch. And this is this was a team on the on the opposite side of the conversation that we just had about the Detroit Lions that was expected to have the worst offensive line in football and look at the way that they're getting things done on the offensive side. So you lose your quarterback, you lose your defensive leader in uh in John Allen and then you come out and do what I think is a program. It shows you where your program is when yeah, you can play call. without two players. It shows you there's a difference between us, which is where we used to be. They used to be the Carolina Panthers, and now they're not. Listen to what David Harrison said after the game about Jaden Daniels and that injury. The Washington Commanders come away with a 40-7 to victory over the Carolina Panthers, and that is domination in some ways. That score actually doesn't even demonstrate how dominant the Washington Commanders really were across all three phases of this football game. But the biggest thing that everybody's going to be talking about coming out of this game tonight, of course, is the injury suffered by rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels. And Jaden Daniels leaves after that first series of the game for the Washington Commanders, the first offensive series, I should say, for the Washington Commanders. It was the actual third series of the game. Now, up front, bottom line up front, I'm going to tell you the vibe that I get is that it's not that serious, that it's not going to be something that's like season ending or, or anything like that. And in fact, I don't get the vibe that it's a rib injury that may even cost him next week against the Chicago Bears. Uh, from what I'm told during the broadcast, they even said they were told or they had the inclination or, or the feeling that the Washington Commanders could have put him back into this game if they needed to. If they didn't need be, to. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't need that. Hey, that, hey, that dude went in. By the time he took his jock strap off, it was 26 to nothing. He said, man, no, we, we can go ahead and take a shower and uh, – you know, yeah, go get some wings no, with some mumbo sauce. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we good. good. I, I ain't got a risk that going back out there playing against them. But man, they playing against a high school team out there. I ain't risking my life with that uh -uh. high school team. But no, the truth of the matter is, Quinn, uh, I met him. And I said, if, if there was somebody you want to be successful, it's him. I know you don't because he used to be with the Falcons. but yeah, I don't mind that at all. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's, a, he's a really, really nice dude that got a second shot at Cliff Kingsbury, too. It looks like their program mm – -hmm is gearing up to be ready. Hopefully he's back because you know what you're going to get next week? You're going to get Jaden Daniels and you're going to get that Williams kid who's from yeah. D.C. playing with Chicago. So the, the number one pick and, and the second quarterback taken in the draft, we're looking forward to that next week. But right now, talk about the NFC's Ross, man, and the differences between them and those bottom feeders we're going to get to in just a second. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that you have to look at is that you, you kind of mentioned it uh, about the NFC North. They've got quarterbacks, they've got identity, they've got coaching, they've got all that. That's exactly what you have to look at when you look at the Washington Commanders. They have their identity. They know exactly who they are, what they are as a football team. That's why you could see them. go. That's why you saw them go out there with Marcus Mariota and be able to still win that game. Something the Atlanta Falcons struggled to do, even though Marcus Mariota is a quality quarterback in the NFL, mm -hmm. quality backup quarterback in the NFL, I'll say. Uh, but then you look at where the rest of these teams are. The New York Giants bench Daniel Jones with a 
should have done two off seasons ago. Uh, <laughs> you have the the Dallas Cowboys who have absolutely no identity on either side of the football. Uh, and then you have the Philadelphia Eagles whose head coach is out there shaving his head, bringing his kids to post game pressers and all these other things. And they have no idea who they are as an aimless team, but they have a really good quarterback and they have a really good system. So there they are kind of middling in a way that is different from where Dallas and New York are. But I think it's all about identity, and, uh, and it's all about quarterback play. And some of these teams have it. The other ones very clearly don't. We don't talk politics in the barbershop, but it's it's wild that out of all the teams in this division, the only place where there is no dysfunction is the nation's capital. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, can, 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 we, can, we, can we get whoever's running the team to run the country, too? Because this, like, this is the only place that seems like everything is right. And now the rest of the story, as my man Paul Harvey used to say, we don't talk bad about Patricia Trainer on this show. As a matter yeah. of fact, if anybody ever says anything bad about Patty on this show, you are banned from this show. But right. Patty is sort of like Jameis Winston, where she is accidentally one of the funniest people I know. Listen to her grief and agony when she talks about the Giants and what they're missing based on who they let go, who came back to haunt them yesterday for almost a buck seventy-five. Saquon Barkley and the Philadelphia Eagles get the last laugh as they embarrass the New York Giants 28-3 at MetLife Stadium. 28-3, same old song. All right, what do I mean by that? Go back and look, if you, have, if you have the stomach, at every single game the Giants have played this season. And they all start out pretty much the same on offense with a slant pass to the X receiver. They don't run enough. Hey, look. Simple. Simple. Hey. Look, they start every game off the same damn way. They throw a slant to the X receiver, and they don't run the ball enough. And, oh, by the way, Ross, they let the dude go who's their best player who came back, and he showed up random enough in that stadium oh, yesterday, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Over 170 rushing yards for Saquon Barkley, added a rushing touchdown uh, as well. Uh, he had the game that he expected to have going up against uh, his former team. And you could see the impact, right? Him having 170 rushing yards over, and that's 176 in total. Uh, Jalen Hurts threw 14 passes in this game. Threw for 114 yards. That's all he had to do to put up 28 points because why? They had a run game. They had a defense. Those are the things that are going to end up winning you football games. And so that's just that's just good football over there for them. And it's atrocious football from Daniel Jones and the uh, the New York Giants. If you listen, I listen to a lot of, of Patricia's show. It sounded like the Giants didn't want to hit their friend. It's like a, a tackling him. Y'all shouldn't have let him go. That's our homeboy. What you talking about? And the Eagles said, you know what? They shouldn't have let you go. Let's go run this thing all down their throat. And it's right. just that's the NFL in, 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 in a three hour window. You see good and you see bad. And uh, the Giants right now are terrible. And that entire division, with the exception, the Philadelphia Eagles are terrible sometimes because they're a coach. But the entire NFC East is turning to the NFC least, with the exception of the non dysfunctional. Washington Commanders. I never thought I would say that. Ooh, uh, Danny Snyder had to sell the team before we got a chance to say that. You want to know who says a lot? Tyler Rowland. He says it early in the morning, too, and he says it loud because we call him the madman for a reason, right? So that's the first half of NFL Locked on NFL, the new show. That's where you're at now, but you're on the daytime version. Tyler Rowland's going to wake you up like an alarm clock, man, and give you a double shot of espresso you ain't going to be able to handle with your regular ears. So make sure you tap in and listen to him as he uses local experts just like me. You can find Ross over there with his smile and stuff. He wasn't supposed to be over here. Ross supposed to be over there with Tyler. But we, we, <laughs> we're all big, one big family, man. It's twice a day. Make sure you hit on that. Check us out wherever you listen or hear your podcast or over on the Locked On NFL YouTube page. We're going to kick Ross out of our house right now and send him back where he belongs. But until then, you guys make sure you take care of each other. Tune in for Locked On NFL. Check out all of your Locked On podcast shows for your team in your area and make sure you take care of yourself and we'll do the same here on Locked On NFL. We'll see you next time.